This video is sponsored by iFixit. More on them in a minute. I'm gonna be using the G 3.8 bit out of my iFixit ProTech toolkit to remove the screw out of the back of the game. Let's have a look at the inside. Initially, it doesn't really look that bad when you look at this, but once you take a closer look, you can actually see that every single one of these circuit traces right down here is completely corroded away. But once you take a close look, you can see there's no actual connection between the pin on the board and the actual circuit trace that goes to all these chips. One of the ways that we could try to repair this is we could add a little jumper wire between this pad and the circuit trace on the board. But the problem is we would have to do that for each one of these. And then we'd have to get this to fit on here. And the problem is there's this bar right here that has to go on right down here, just like this. And if we look down there, that bar would hit right on those wires, which means that this top cover would not actually install correctly. The other problem is that that's just the liquid damage right on this part right here. There's gonna be liquid damage under each one of these chips. And then on the back side, there's also liquid damage all along here and along a bunch of these little vias right here. So I've decided rather than try and fix up this board, why don't we just install all of these chips onto a new board? This is a board that I had manufactured specifically for this video. You can see that this one is nice and thin, just like the original. The first one that I had made was a little too thick. When it's this thick, it doesn't fit in the game card case correctly, and it won't actually plug into the Game Boy when you try to plug it in to play a game. Now with this correct size board, we can kind of do a dry test fit, and it fits in there just fine and the top cover of the game cart also slides in and fits on there normally. With the one that's too thick, the problem is that it'll sort of fit in here, but this won't actually sit down there far enough that it'll clip in there how it should. There is little clips right on the game card case, and with this one that's too thick, it just won't slip in there how it should. So that's why I had to get these made that are the right size. And I believe this is a one millimeter thickness. So next, what I'm gonna do here is add a whole bunch of flux. That's gonna be a gel-like substance you see me put on all these pins. That just helps all the solder flow. And then what I'll do is come through over here and I will add some flux and then I'll add some fresh solder to each of these pins. After I have the solder there, then I will heat up this chip and remove it from this board. And then I will heat this board and install the chip onto this board. I'll be using a hot air soldering station to do that work. The nice thing about hot air is you can heat up a whole bunch of joints at once rather than just one or two that you could do with a regular soldering iron. And then of course we will be replacing the battery while we're in here. There's no reason to do all this work and not just replace the battery. Now I'm just going through and touching each of these pins with a little bit of solder. We don't need a lot of solder on here, just enough to connect each of the pins. And when we remove the pins from the original board that's damaged, there's gonna be a little bit of solder still on the pins from that. So once I get the chips placed onto the new board, then I'll go through and check and make sure each of the pins has enough solder. And if not, I'll just add a little bit more. Now my goal here is to prep each of these pins that is gonna have a component on it. So then once I'm done with that, I can just place all the chips on it one after the other without stopping to do any extra tinning. Okay, and now taking a quick look at our work, we've got a little bit of solder on each of the joints that we need to attach components to. So that's what we wanted to do. Now that there's a little bit of solder on each of these pads, when I go to install the component, it's gonna stick much easier than it would if there was no solder at all on it. Solder loves to stick to itself, so if you have a component that has a little bit of solder on it and then a board that has a little bit of solder on it, when you heat those up and the solder is liquid, it'll just stick almost like a magnet right to the other solder. And now with that all done, let's get our hot air station started up and start placing components. One of the things I have to be careful of using hot air on these really thin boards is overheating them. If they get too overheated, then they can warp or the layers can delaminate and we definitely want to avoid that. So I'm gonna be very careful while I'm heating it and give each board a break in between replacing components. One of the reasons I use this large, thick silicone mat is to absorb some of the heat when I'm heating stuff like this up.
Next, I need to inspect all those joints, but check out this DM I just got. Hey, love the vids. My friend found this and gave it to me. Probably just going to toss it. Don't toss it. Unless you were looking for it completely free sent to you. Here are some pictures. Look at this thing. It even has it, what looks like the original battery cover. Heck yeah. He does say, however, it does work and make screen slash sound. So of course I told him to send it to me. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of me fixing this. But let's check out these solder joints now. These joints, I'm definitely going to need to go over with my iron. This guy's definitely soldered on just fine. But these ones I need to go over. Let's check this other chip over here. These ones actually look okay. I'll probably go over them too with my iron just to make sure. This guy's soldered on fine. So is this guy. These ones over here are fine, but I will go over them with... Oh, no, they're not fine. Some of them are fine, so I'll go over all of those. Let's see, we've got one more component over here. That guy's fine. This chip is soldered on fine, but I still will go over them with an iron just to make sure there's a plenty of good fresh solder on there. This guy's fine. This actually looks pretty good too. And this one's good as well. This is the main chip that have the legs that need to be resoldered. So I'm going to start here, then I'm just going to go over all the legs and make sure they're each connected very solidly. There's already quite a bit of flux still on the board, so I shouldn't need any more flux. I just need to go through with a nice hot iron and some fresh solder and touch each of these legs, and that will create a really nice connection there. And after I manually soldered those, you can see that each of these pins is soldered on perfectly. And now with that all done, we can get the battery installed next. Now I already have some fresh solder on these pads right here. So the next thing I need to do is put some fresh solder on the back of the battery pins as well. And that'll just make it so when I go to install it, the solder will just stick right to each other how it likes to. Now, given that these are large metal pieces that connect to the battery, it's going to take quite a bit of heat to get the solder to stick here. So I will be using my large soldering iron and quite a bit of solder. There we go. And there we go. This is why you use a fume extractor. We get all that smoke out of here now. Okay, now with our fume extractor going, can make sure that those pins have plenty of solder on them. There we go. That's better. And now this is the positive pin right here, and this is the negative, and this is where the positive pin attaches and the negative pin attaches. So here we go. Got to give that a lot of heat. And I'm also gonna go through and put some more flux on that. There we go, that's got a good connection. Okay, and there we go. Now we have the battery installed. I think we have every component removed from this board and installed on the new board. I'm gonna have to clean up all these pins and clean a bunch of the old flux off of here. So let's get that done next, and then we can put it together and see if it'll work in a Game Boy. I really hope this works. This is a lot of work. 
I'm going to come through just with a Q-tip at first and remove as much of the flux as I can with that. Then I'll come through with a little toothbrush and that'll get in between all the little cracks and crevices. Definitely need to get all the flux off of these pins. I probably should have put some tape or something over them to just keep it off of there because that'll definitely cause a, a bad connection. But this is actually the first time I've done this, so live and learn, I guess, right? Maybe in this case, fix and learn. Okay, that's better. Now we need to clean these pins off and then it's gonna be ready to test. Now, since this is a brand new PCB, I don't think we need to really, like I don't think we need to sand these down or anything like that. Using some IPA on them, it's gonna work just fine. Now we also need to clean out these, uh, the case for this game. You can see it's got a bunch of corrosion right up here and down here. So we gotta get that all cleaned out. I hate to put a brand new PCB into a case that looked like this. So we wanna make sure and get that looking good. And then once that's done, we can test it and see if it's gonna work after all this. Okay, and that is looking so much better. Now I feel good about installing this brand new PCB into the case. Okay, it all feels good so far. Let's make sure this top piece is gonna fit. If I can get it aligned. There we go. Okay, that seems to fit just fine. Okay. You guys have seen me using all sorts of tools today, including soldering irons and a hot air soldering station, and even a fume extractor. All this stuff is available right at ifixit.com slash tronixfix. I highly recommend their tools. They also have a great website where you can find repair guides and parts for lots of devices. Speaking of parts, they're offering a special deal for crucial SSDs for your Steam Deck. So if you have a Steam Deck and want to install an SSD into it, go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix. Now let's see if this game's gonna work. Okay, here we go. Come on, I really hope this works. Okay, we got a Nintendo logo, that's good. Okay, good so far. And there we go. I have to admit, that was a pretty fun fix for me. I hope you enjoyed it as well. Don't forget to go to ifixit.com slash tronixfix if you're looking for any parts or tools or just a repair guide to fix something you're trying to fix. If you like this video, I have a video where I tried to fix a bunch more of these Game Boy game carts. So I'll put that video up on your screen now if you want to come hang out with me over there and see if I can fix them. Thanks so much for watching today and I hope you have a good one.